morning everyone so today I know it's been a while but maybe I'll make more videos now that we're trapped inside um, anyway so there is some of you know a Corona Con Universal Battle Tournament going on it's a five game event spanning about a month I think it's like four games four days per game with a day of like quote unquote rest um, people throughout the the world actually so it's mainly usa players i'd say about more than about half players are usa because it's usa based in the discord and then we have a lot of actually etc players from other countries people like furion and scrub and and i guess other popular players but i guess those are the two best ones coming um so it'll be interesting how it pans out because i mean the usa etc team is in it but then it's like muddled with like a lot of other usa players so it's like a lot of really really good players and then like some fairly good players and then some filler players i'd say not to be mean to them but it's a great experience for everybody you know it'll be fun so one thing that's unique about this tournament is you can change lists every every round you can change your you can't change your book and you know what to be fair this isn't like some hardcore it's supposed to be fun while we're all kind of trapped inside. So the reason that you can change your list is because have you ever submitted a list for a tournament and then been like, I don't like this list. Or you played two games in a tournament and you're like, I don't like this list. So it's kind of to get around that, oh, I submit a list and then after a game or two, I don't really like it. I want to tweak it. But then you're like, I still have a month of this tournament. I have to play the same crappy list. That happens a lot with like uh, scrimmages where by the time you actually get to your scrimmage game on UB, your list has already evolved. So the idea isn't to tailor to your opponent. So it's not like I know I'm playing High Elves next, I'm going to take X or Y, right? It's more of like, oh, you know what? I didn't like this list. I think this unit should be something else. Let me modify it. Because you're going to have to switch it before you know your next round, though, of course, if you can read the battle points, you can kind of guess who you're... It's not for that. It's not the tailor list. So, for example, you'll probably see some lists that some people took where it's like, that does that looks kind of odd, this is weird. And they're kind of like, well, I can test something, and then if it I don't like it, I can tweak it or change it back to my normal list. So we're going to go through the Warriors list, mainly because it has some of the better players in it. And because if you go through all 66 lists, and then they fucking change the next day, like, I'm not going to go through all that. It's more to see what cool things in Warrior. So maybe every round I'll check out the Warrior list if they've changed significantly. But there's a enough variety in these lists, I think, to at least have a conversation about. So let's go. Um, so we have Adam Jones. He's the Warriors ETC guy from England, and he's known for some of his weird, weird lists, I'd say, though his current style seems to be running this triple chosen lord with some knights and... I don't know what he does with it. It seems like he did decently at the some team event that England went to. Um, I think if I remember correctly, he got like a bunch of like 12 or 13 point wins. He didn't really crush anybody, which, which kind of makes sense if you look at the list. It seems hard unless somebody just lets you like charge everything into their all their points. Um, I could see how it's kind of like a win objective type army. So we have a, a Porton Lord. So they're all greed lords. That's why they're all say so much shit like all the weapons they can have so a porn guy on a ds with dust forge a just a death cheater guy with rod of battle and then we have a entropic ore guy with talisman of shielding so if they all go in the same unit he loses death cheater and dust forged and burning porn I, I don't think they all go together all the time i think this is meant to kind of if he does go in the relentless unit he kind of spans them out afterwards with the relentless banner um, and then he has a mage with alchemy, just a basic level four binding scroll. No Veilwalker needed in this, just kind of a, I'm going to cast some decent spells. I have hereditaries and buffs and missiles if needed. And I have Rod of Battle, so five spells, I guess you could say. I don't think he takes, no, he doesn't take a prelate in this one. He had it at one time. 17 warriors, 17 barbs, so chaff, eight chosen that are kind of slow, and then white knights, nice knight. he likes those knights. So a lot of scoring. I don't know. I don't have too much. I always thought it was kind of odd that this list actually worked for him as well as it did. Maybe it's a matchup thing, too. I mean, the Chosen Lords are all super hard to kill, right? One is, one takes away your weapons and has a, you know, they all have one-up saves, at least from shooting. Um, 
in combat, it might be two up save on like the Death Cheater. Well, no, Death Cheater will give you. No, he'll be good. He'll be one up even if he uses Great Weapon. So, the only one that might have a two up would be the Chosen Lord with Entropic if he goes Great Weapon or Halberd or Paired Weapons. But that's fine. You'll know at the time what you're fighting against, and you can choose to go Shield if you want. I mean, they, they fight really well. I'm not going to lie. They're, they're a pretty solid bunch of heroes if you think about. So, like, one th I mean, there's, besides being slow, right, if you compare, like, this guy, he's 490 points. You can compare him to, say, a, what am I thinking of? An Elder, right? An Elder has six strength, six attacks. This guy has five strength, whether it's seven, five, six. He has a five-up save. So he's a better save than the Elder. has two less wounds. Like, it's hard to compare it directly because the one's a monster that thunderstops and runs around. But, like, for the points, like, you get a very solid hero that can hide in a unit and get rid of magic items. Um, it's kind of this idea that really strong heroes are hold points better than really strong monsters because they can't be picked out as easily. Um, but you also lose some of that threat because they're kind of slow, right? They're only moving five, no swift stride. So I'm sure this list is actually pretty hard to break. And pretty hard to get a lot of points off of unless you really can somehow smash all the heroes. Um, that being said, I'm sure it wins scenarios a lot too. Uh, I, I do, do I see this crushing the world? I don't know. I think it's not as dynamic as a lot of lists are, but I can. I think this is pretty cool. All right, Thomas Muller, little Thomas as I call him. I don't know if he likes that name. Um, so he's the German. He was the German UD player for last year, and he switched to Warriors. Warriors have been making their way around Germany, and I just talked to the one that plays it because Heinrich played it. Thomas, Big Thomas, Scrub played it. Um, but when you can't play Broken UD anymore, what do you do? You switch to Warriors. That seems to be the theme in the world that I've seen. Um, so he's running a list that I really like it. I had a similar list i was playing at boot camp last week with the usa team um which would be my if i played a helm all style and that's a whole another thing i'm not taking a helm all of this event so and then jeremy g is so that's crazy that's crazy in itself but let's look at thomas's list so um we have a veil walker binding troll heirloom guy on a wardia so a two up save guy with a binding scroll and five spells, Veilwalker, great. Veilwalker Alchemy is excellent. And he does, because of the Battle Shrines and Veilgate Orb, he's going to have enough actual tokens to make use of Veilwalker enough. Chosen Lord of Burning Porn, Talisman Shilling, Lucky Charm, Gluttony. I, I like this build. I think it's cheaper. Like, yes, there's, a, there's an argument to say just go all in. Excuse me. Go all in, go Envy, and I don't spite. Having played with the flying Porton Lord that's 5 strength 5 all the time, I can tell you that you can make it work. So at least this guy, 5 strength 5, if he wins once or is chaffed once, he's 5 strength 6 all the time. So that's half the... I mean, the strength 6 is the biggest part, in my opinion, of Idol Spite. Obviously, 6 attacks is a very strong because it's a 6 attack of a very strong weapon. But you save 70 points and you pretty much can get your strength 6. Because a lot of people chaff you early. It's not like people are not going to chaff you because of gluttony. He still gets, you know, a 5-up save is nice for snipes and, and random things. Because some, a lot of times, I didn't die because I failed my 1-up rollable save. I died because somebody with a big-ass weapon came and knocked me in the face. So, I, And it's a, it's a pretty cheap build, right? 585 isn't bad. I like it. 16 warriors of speed, got to have that for the, the unit. He takes So he takes another unit of just warriors that's slightly bigger, but with two shrines, you can make two really solid units. One chaff piece in the dogs. Um, and so did I have the I had basically this. What did I have different? Just thinking to myself. Oh, yeah, I had... I'm trying to think of my list. I don't even remember. Oh, yeah, I had, like, lust guys here. Um, and then... My items were slightly different, but so so he's gonna get pretty solid scoring. So five knights, three Feldrax, two warrior units. It's, it's really solid scoring, especially when you put in the battle shrines and the heroes. I think the Feldrax and the knights are a nice combo with each other. Very cheap, 
Very, it gives you some speed. So one thing I like about this list is this is slow. Up here, it's very slow. It's very solid. It's very slow, if you, even if you include the shrine. And so to stop people from pressuring you too much, especially if you're going to be kind of methodical with your magic and your portals, you need something to, like, keep people, make them respect you or, like, put something on the flank that's not too expensive. And so these four things are really nice for that. Lots of beef. One up saves, two up saves, toughness five. I mean, a chosen chariot's five, toughness five, two up save. It comes with six strength, six attacks if you need to, three strength, five. Some swift strides, move eight, some move seven. Um, and then two scoring in there. Just really solid. And this isn't too many points, right? You're talking, what, if you add it all together, 1,400 points. A nice third of your army over there. <clears throat> Which is, but it's it does a lot of damage, and it's you can hide it if needed. It's fast. You put it in some battle shrines for some magic. He has seven pretty solid spells. He'll probably take you know he'll have a. If you think about his spells, so he'll have seven spells. He'll have hereditary, obviously on his sorcerer, plus four alchemy spells, which will be whatever. Probably two buffs and two damage spells depending on the target. He'll have a whispers of the veil for another combat buff. So I'll have three great combat buffs. In plus armor, glory of gold, and whispers, and then he'll have damage spells of grave calls, hellfire, and then whichever metal ones, alchemy ones, <coughs> fit the enemy. And if it doesn't, he'll just take the minus one armor stuff like that. And then <coughs> minus one armor helps things like this, and and these guys become even better because they're spike shields. So as you lose armor, their AP one becomes more useful. He has a gateway. I think this is a solid gateway army. Has very good units to portal this. This. I mean, you can portal thirteen warriors, and and that is something I kind of like about his mage setup, as opposed to being a. He pays the extra points to put it on the war dios, which I think gives it a little bit of boost because you can actually put this guy in combat with thirteen warriors and a shrine without the lord, and it's still a super beefy unit. You're talking thirteen plus eight plus four is 25 spots, right? He still gets four strength, four attacks from the mount, um, and he's casting spells. So you, you can make two solid bunkers on much that could be portaled. And, you know, it's it's maybe it's not my favorite style. Like, I've played this shit before, and maybe it's a little more passive where you kind of sit there and say, I'm going to wreck you with alchemy, my strong magic phase. I have a lot of speed. I'm going to win the scenario. And if you come into me, maybe you lose 20-0. Um, but if you kind of stay away, it might be hard for me to push. Um, I really like the list. Um, yeah, I really like this list. I, and I like the little tweaks. I think I had Ledger, and I think this is a better setup. I think you need the five spells. And I think you have enough enough uh, Veil tokens with three channels to, uh, to get it done. So a very nice list. Um, Yep, let's keep going. Jeremy Godenschlag, so he's taking so he's taking a helm off. He doesn't do that too much anymore. Let's see what he has. Do, do, do. Hey, he doesn't even have Shieldbreaker. This is not a Jeremy G list without Shieldbreaker. So, a lot of attacks on a Lord with Lust. Uh, it's a Lust guy. Where is he going? Can he join? I guess he can join these things. He just can be picked out by it. All right, so he has a uh, ledger guy. All right, does he have any other casting? No. All right, so he's going on four. Interesting. All right, it's not too bad. I mean, it's four spells, but he's going to get a good amount of tokens. This dark chariot guy. Da, da, da. So he puts the ward save here, so this guy doesn't have any ward save. So it's a chariot without any ward. But he has Entropic, because so, he couldn't take. Interesting. It's not. I mean, it's only 500 points. It's a strong Chaos Lord. Uh, they'll get Orb. A lot of Lust stuff. Goes to the Guard. See, this is where I thought he might take Shieldbreaker on this guy. Skinning Lash. Chosen Chariots. A lot of Chosen Chariots in this event. Lust. So a lot of lust stuff. I mean, everything's lust. And a Helm Maul. I kind of like, I like the naked Helm Maul with this because 
He has a lot of things that can helm all, but he doesn't need it turn one. Um, just getting Lash Bros are fun. Yeah, I'll be interested to see how this does. I think there's just some matchups where maybe it's going to feel like I'd feel bad. Like, but maybe not. I don't know. It's not bad. I don't, I guess I'm not in love with, like, this guy. But it's just a risky way to play it. But for this kind of event, it seems fun. Ben Kerr, okay. He took this to a tournament recently. So, he has three flying people. Hit characters, so goes the guard shield breaker. He is shield breaker. There we go. Not that I, I don't think it's that great on a chaos lord, but I'm guessing this shield breaker is on paired weapons, so we're not gonna fault them for that. Vorp save, Vorp ward save, and then ghostly guard. Okay, death cheater, more gauntlet screw. Not bad. Nice setup. See, this is where, like, if you could fit Hero's Heart, you'd want it, but I think he's just, he's going to be over Hero Board, so he does that. He looks like it's very close. So, but it's still a dragon for 645, and he's still an adept of cultism. He has, he has no prelate in this list, which is, I think, is fine. Warriors with Flaming Standard. I, the Flaming Standard's kind of confused me, because, like, I'm just kind of like, oh, what are you... What are you flaming standarding? You don't have... I mean, I guess if you play against regen, but you don't have alchemy to kind of help with it. This is a scoring unit, so he only has three scoring. That'll be an issue, potentially. His magic is an occultism guy, and then two battle shrines I kind of fit in. I like it. These create kind of a nice little bunker. They're very slow compared to the rest of the army. It's Warhounds for Chaff. Again, it's like... Would you drop a couple warriors... And flaming centers to put these in the core, and then you get 200 points here. I think I talked to him about that. Um, Ryan Jack and Travel Spear seem cool. No units to put them in, but hey, that's fine. I still like the Tribal War Spear. So, a lot of monsters. It's a fun list, and he did well with that the last tournament, so you can't fall for him there. All right, so this is me. Um, I kind of stole a lot of ideas from a list I saw Heinrich playing the other day. I would say. The list I've been practicing more now is like super aggro with like five chariots and two elders and heralds and stuff like that. But I'm always willing to try different things. So we have a Wasteland Behemoth Adept on Obsidian Rock with Hero's Heart. So 650 for a seven wound, six toughness monster um, with a mage on it that has four strength, five attacks. Not bad. I've tried the Doom Lord version, which is fine. I only played it one game. Um, this one's close, like, the Doom Lord version has a, some more attacks compared to this guy, but, um, this guy's also a wizard, and he can flee, uh, backed up by a Wizard Master of Evo, so no Veilwalker in this list, mainly because I don't, it's 100 points I didn't have, and I think with Evocation it's not as needed, it's basically kind of a buff wagon with a couple damage spells as needed, so I'll have seven spells in this list. Um, mainly buffs, if you think about it, you know, some really good buffs on the, the Alchemy, Gloria Gold, and Armor is really good for this list if you look at the rest, and then obviously Evo buffs are really good. I think Evo buffs are really good for Warriors if you have a lot of fighting units. Um, and then from here, I basically just took one of a lot of things. So, 40 Barbarians to Spear and Shield. So I have Flaming Standard because I actually have Alchemy to pair with it. It means that if this unit's fighting, all I have to do is get one of these two spells off, and it helps them indirectly, if, even if I get the armor off on, like, the Feldrax or the Knights or something. Um, we have ten less warriors. This is mainly for the mage and scoring. Some chaff. Feldrax. Uh, I'm going Halberd just to see how it works, I think. Because if you run them, like, two by two, which I might do, depending on if I need the stubborn, you know, then... Your basic gate, you know, do you want plus two attacks with plus one offense, or do you want just plus strength? And I figured I have enough like strength four to five shit. Let's let's put in some strength six. Nice with the buffs. We'll see. Um, knife with pride, hold some people up. A, one chosen chariot agreed. Some more chaff. Uh, 
elders you see a lot travel works for giant can go in the barbarians probably won't unless like there's pyro magic that can like eat him up outside of it because he just doesn't have to be i mean he's not bad in there um but he doesn't have to be in there uh and i want to try a forsaken one this is what i've never played one but i feel like it has a potential and i could make a arm a video just talking about forsaken ones so as you can see, I have four big monsters, a little bit of everything. We'll see how they work. Um, I'm probably not at a risk, but there's a good chance, like, if I don't like this list when I play with it, because I haven't played it, that I just go back to my more ETC-style lists, whether it be an aggro chariot list or something like Thomas Muller is taking, Lil Tom's taking. Fator, he is a Spanish... He was the coach? Or did he only oh, played this year. Was he a... Was he the UD player? I think he was the UD player. See, look, all the UD players come to Warriors. Um, do, 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 do. Okay, his list is wonky, I think. Harold, Chosen Lord on a DS with... Huh. Let's see. So he's a one-up save no matter what. He has a flaming standard. I have no idea. But he, no, he flaming's not bad. Okay. Then he has this. He's an adept. So this and adept. I've taken solid magic phase. It's not the greatest magic phase. I've, he has a battle stream. He has three channels, seven, six spells. Good enough, in my opinion. Um, this is probably a little weird being greed. I know they're greed and he's greed, so they can go together. It's a little weird only to me because, well, you could put him in the Chosen, I guess. It's just weird because you pay all these points to have them greed, and if you stick even the Shrine or two Chosen Lords and this in it, like, none of them get to fight with their new weapons. But I guess there's always a chance that they're not in that unit and they need to fight off for themselves, so I don't hate it. 14 Fallen is pretty cool. I think this unit's underrated. I mean, think of how many attacks this gets. It's Light Troops, Move 12. Like, if you put it in, it has the three rolls built in. If you put it on the flank, like, seven wide or eight wide, it's a lot of... I mean, they paired weapon strength four, three attacks each. They die easily, but they're, they're toughness four. Like, it, they can hunt, like, chaff easily. I mean, if they flank you, I've seen them, like, wreck, like, some units just with... When you're talking, like, 20-some attacks, strength four, if they flank you and then get up to two up save with the alchemy spell... I think if you can get your chosen, if you can get your scoring, because he only has one, two, three scoring. So he's, again, it's a scoring, is it going to work? Who knows? Um, if you can get your scoring in play, I think for 300 points, wow, that's so cheap for 14. Feels so cheap. I like it. And in the true Spanish nature, fuck musicians right here. Oh, they took one here, though. Interesting. Um, a lot of chosen chariots, I think they're becoming very popular. Um, they're tanky, they hit hard, they get built-in rerolls. If you compare them to, like, Elders, they're a lot slower, at least as far as moving down the flanks, but you could say they're not actually as tanky if you compare to Toughness 6, 6 wounds, 3 up save versus Toughness 5, 5 wounds, 2 up save. But they're 100 points, I mean, they're 115 points less, and their offensive power is actually greater with the Strength 6, no Stomp. There's very nice pieces, and I think people are starting to use them more. Um, five Chosen of Greed, interesting. I'm cu I've am i been seeing a lot of this in the Spanish list, and they're slow. I mean, they're moving five. It is, I think they're under. You kind of don't realize you get double wounds. I mean, I know they have two wounds. It's still sometimes you see them on the board, and there's like six models, and you're like, oh, that's 12 wounds to get through. It's not cheap to get through. And taking the Chosen is actually pretty inexpensive, but you can go with what you need at the time. Um, so it can put out a lot of four attacks a model with paired weapons, or you can do, you know, the strength six like up here, or the strength five as needed. Shrine's always nice to have. Flares. And a giant that has no upgrade, which is always interesting. And maybe he's just saying, for 260, why not? A move compared to a chariot. Okay, a warrior chair is 30 points less. This has strength five attacks just like it. It stomps. It has a lot of more wounds. It comes with built-in rerolls. Maybe just, it's a little weird, like it feels like some of his optimization choices are a little odd, but I, I like it, I think it's cute. It's kind of like that one of everything shit, like that, that, but it just takes one of everything that I don't take. 
I take these, but you know what I mean. You get it. Actually, I took a lot of those, but I like it. Last list, Chris Hines, USA guy. There we go, big balls, just just right there. Oh, so we have a cultism guy on a sky wheel. Good magic phase. Where's this guy gonna go though? Is he just gonna go by in the fucking barbarians? I don't know where this guy's gonna go. I'll tell you that. Maybe he's just gonna go in one of these. Uh, but it's gonna give him two good buffs. Like reroll to hit and reroll to wound, which will be pretty nice for these. Now, if he went alchemy, he could have compared with the flaming banner nicely. I think it's going to be interesting. Like he's taking the great weapon versions, and I've done that, and I'm taking spears now. And it's the idea of like, do you actually want to strike first? But I played in some bad match, bad pairings where like it was demons, and they just killed all my barbarians before I swung. And I think a lot of armies don't do enough attacks and that's one thing that's kind of nice about like units like this where it's like you have six strength six ap2 coming back and like if you're not if you don't like come with a ton of attacks if you're one of those like it's like oh i lose eight barbarians and then it's like wow you know i take 20 10 attacks back it's kind of like just a trade of bodies they're not that expensive so this guy's kind of interesting I guess he'll kill barbarians or the warhounds or put wounds on other things. Uh, big boy. Feldrax, good with this. Not much else to say. I, I do like, uh, I do find things like the wretched ones, even without the going all in on them, interesting. I've seen a lot of armies that have trouble dealing with wretched ones. They're 480 for 18 wounds with, you know, T4 and five up regen and the thing is like it's a lot of this and same thing with the first second one it's a lot of this like you do, you're going to do damage to him but you're going to take a lot of damage back right if you don't have shooting and you have to charge this unit you're like automatically taking 66 plus six grinds back so it's like oh can you handle that think of like demonettes or uh whatever succubi they go in and they're like i'm ripping them apart and then they do like you know, they do nine wounds, and then they lose, like, what's the average? 66, 21, plus 6, 27, 18. I mean, they kill, like, 12 back on average. And then you're going to take another. If you don't kill all of them, they're going to take another. You know, you're just taking a lot of wounds to grind through this. And it gives time for, like, elders to clip in. Um, and random movers, I think having, like, one random mover, whether it's this or the Forsaken that I'm trying, on like a flank is pretty annoying because think about like it, what I mean a bombs are better but just think about how often like sometimes on the flank you're walking up and and you can run around some unit with your cav or your skirmishers or your fast monster and then how that changes when you're like wretched ones just turn and like you know can hit you at any angle and the fact that it'll lock you I mean it'll kill like a lot of monsters like it's just I like it I like I, I think this list is pretty cool um has some pieces I, I don't love, but it's one thing I liked actually looking through the list is they're all pretty, pretty unique if you look at them, right? This is more of a aggro in your face. We have a one of everything with a herald, pretty much one of everything with like a behemoth type thing. We have a bunch of flying monsters, more of a shove it type with little magic but you know decent magic with this it's interesting magic we have a lust bonanza we have probably the stock this is probably the most etc list we have going um, german engineering this is probably the, this is probably the list you're most likely to see if etc happens this year like something like this and then we have something that adam jones plays which is just wonky so uh, there you go. Hope you enjoyed it, and we'll see what happens round one.